Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Mysthea. Mysthea is for two to four players, takes about 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. In the game Mysthea, you're going to be playing as a leader of a clan, and what has happened is basically a meteorite has come and destroyed the land, and from that new life has uh, commerced, and now uh, you're now battling basically for different portions of different islands around this big map. You're going to be fighting creatures along with fighting each other, trying to gain dominion on different locations and gaining overall victory or glory points throughout the game. As you're doing that, you're going to then ex get additional cards in your hand and you can play those cards as actions. Throughout the game, you're going to be using those things to do specific things like putting units on the board or golems or other such type things. You're also going to be garrisoning your different islands, things you control, and using those different portions of land that you control to give yourself more benefits. The game is going to go on for three different ages and from that is going to increase the different types of cards that you're going to be able to get as well as the different kinds of the monsters that are going to be moving around from island to island trying to destroy you. Nevertheless, let's go and check out Miss Thea, the game. So here we have Miss Thea, and most of what's included, there's more that I'll show you on the other side, but let's just talk about what we have here. You have two different boards. You have the game board over here, and this is kind of like the events board that will explain what's going to go, what's going to happen, what's going to be worth a certain amount of points, as well as farther back over here tells you what happens when you do fighting. Monsters are over here, and these are the different age cards. These cards over here, there's four of each different color, and you're going to use these guys as starting cards for each player. Everybody's going to get a hand of four cards and one of each type of color. These over here are are going to be the different locations that will be placed on this board. There's five different islands on the board as you can see along with the storm card which will have the monsters moving. These right here are going to be used for references. There's four of them and we actually got a whole stack of them. We only need to show you four. These guys over here are attunement spaces. This will show you what happens when you attune to the different portions of the islands. And these guys here are going to be your leaders. You're going to choose one of these guys and they have a special ability on them. These are the leader tokens you'll be using that count as three different characters or three different uh, power. And then these over here are your quest objectives that will lead you to these little encounters and there's a bunch of different ones and you have the options of choosing which one you want to do and then showing you what happens when you choose those specific things. Around the board as you can see are your point markers and your point totals and uh, getting over here to 100 is going to be very important because uh, farther along your head in the game the more likely you are to win. These are also going to be used too for each player you're going to choose one of these guys here. First player gets to go first, second, third, and fourth along with how much starting energy you get and you'll have the ability to flip these things from the blue side to the white side to then be able to use special actions such as maybe attunement. And as you can see you're also going to be getting a board that has uh, different aspects of each round. You'll be flipping over cards from this deck over here and they'll be going across showing you the point totals of all the cards of value and uh, you want to have the characters on these locations. As you can see here after we move away over these attunement cards, these are the islands on the board and with these you're going to be using a two player game to place on these spe on specific locations so that way that they're not going to be able to be used uh, until you walk on them so like the mirage tokens basically it small shortens the board up for a smaller player game uh, and let's go ahead and show you the other player side of the boards this over here is going to be the four player boards as you can see they're all different colors and they'll each be getting their own unique leader as well as up here is going to be a track for two different things you're going to be using it for energy and for experience and they're going to energy is basically going to be used for buying certain things or use, spending certain things on cards and experience as well will do certain things uh, over here you've got fortifications these are going to be putting on islands to give you a bonus in strength you've got your infantry as well as don't forget you're going to be using this guy too your commander as well as these things here because you're going to be golems in the actual game you'll be getting miniatures though which is kind of nice uh, but these work well for the uh, prototype so over here you can see there's different cards that you will be putting down to increase your style of play your board and each card is going to tell you where they're going to go and whether or not they're going to go on the board or not so like this one here is not going to go on the board however with maybe something like this one right here it will go on the board with this little symbol here and it tells you what the cards do there's a lot of symbols in this game and it references to what you need to pay in order to what you're going to get and uh, you can some of them are going to be more usable and some of them are going to be an instant effect or an effect you're going to use once. Uh, you're also going to be getting a certain amount of uh, energy as well when you play the certain cards and they have a variety of different actions you'll be using as well throughout the game. We'll go ahead and talk about setup a little bit and as well as how to play your first couple turns and then we'll come back down to the boards and give you a couple turns of play for the game but for the most part this is what you're going to be getting in the game Mysthea. 
So that's all the components for the game Mysthea. Now let's talk about the setup a little bit as well as how a turn is going to go and then I'll show you it below. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is get your leader as well as get all the items you're going to be needing such as you're going to need your infantry units, you're going to need your golems, and then you're going to get a certain amount of infantry units and golems. You're going to get two infantry and one golem to start with as well as your leader, and then you're going to have a pool of additional units which you can reuse to recruit. You're also going to get your energy and you're going to get your experience. You're going to get one of each of the four different colored starter cards as well as making sure everything is set up for those and it's going to be chosen blindly as well as having a single leader you're going to get a first or second player marker that's also going to be used to be flipped upside down or uh, or right side up depending on the circumstance to be used for different abilities as well as you're going to be getting these uh, little guys here little fortress tokens that you can use to protect your uh, locations on the different islands and then you're going to go ahead and start the game and you're going to see this here it shows you a little small little uh, play reference card and you have three different options you can do to begin the game you can choose to act meditate or develop if you choose to act, you're going to play a card. If you choose to meditate, you're going to gain three energy, as well as any bonuses from every single region you're on. And then you could choose also to develop, which is you can refill, uh, you can add one additional card to the place where you're going to be buying new cards throughout each and every age. And then you can choose to buy them, or you can get rid of all the cards and add three new ones and choose to buy those if you'd like. You can buy one, two, or three, and the cost will go increasingly upright as you continue that. Then after you've chosen one of the main primary actions, you got a secondary action down here until you can choose to activate, use uh, to start a battle, or you can use to move uh, your island, as, also, as, well, as well as attune your character to an island, I'll explain that a bit, as well as face an encounter. And encounters you can do at the end of your turn, basically, and these things right here, you can make a choice, and you're going to gain or, and or possibly lose things, depending on the encounter you're going to be doing. And so then you're going to have the next player go, and it's going to go back and forth, and as the rounds continue, you're then going to add new cards from the deck, these little location cards, it'll show you different portions of the islands, uh, to the map until a monster spawns and then after all the cards have been placed uh, the, there's gonna be an action phase in which the monster's gonna move around and you're gonna score certain points and whatnot and then once again you're gonna continue to the second age and then the third age uh, adding new monsters that are hidden secretly face down for each area you're gonna add them to, down to the bat board as well as into the d card deck and you continue playing like that scoring points anyway let me go ahead and show you a couple turns as well as the full setup for the game as best as I can Okay, so here we have the game for the most part set up. We're going to take you by each and every one of these guys to show you the best best setup for them. Uh, as you can see, like I said before, there are the island cards, the different uh, locations on the island, as well as a storm card, which you're going to take in and shuffle it up, as well as flipping over one of the monsters. These are also randomly placed down. And then you're going to take their miniature, whatever miniature that monster is going to be. In our, in our case, we're actually going to be using these things here. And you're going to put it down on the island based on the location it tells you to put it on. Uh, this is for later use when you're fighting it, basically. But after that, you're going to take this card here and you're going to put it in the deck of cards and you're going to shuffle it up and after you shuffle it up good and plenty you're going to then flip over the deck and this is going to show you your first starting land in which you're going to acquire points and it would depend at the end of each age is how many points you're going to get depending on which areas you control if you can if this goes here you're going to get two points for every single one you control and if islands are over here you're going to get eight points for each island you control these are the second and third age of uh, era cards which you'll be getting after every single age as well as additional monsters that are come onto the board and they will stay there until they have been defeated. All right, let's move on. So now we're on the next main board of the game, and as you can see, I've set it up so the players have their starting points at one, and it'll go around the track. I've also set up these Mirage tokens, which are going to be make sure that the players can't use this in a two-player game. These little spaces aren't going to be used. Make sure you set it up so that one of each different type is covered for each island. That way, uh, it has an equal amount of spaces for everybody, as well as equal amount of types of spaces. Over here is your deck of cards in which you'll be using for encounters. You'll just go ahead and shuffle that and set it aside. And these over here are your two-minute cards, and you can select your day or night phase depending on which game mode you want to play, and set it up over here. Each of these is going to represent a certain type of, um, of location, and you can see the different location types by means of the board over here. After you've gone ahead and done that, making sure your Mirage tokens and all, and all that is good, you're then going to select which person is going to go first and which person is going to go second, and then place accordingly to the rules, and you're going to place on any location you want. Make sure it's not occupied by another player. And after you've gone ahead and done place that, we're going to look at the next boards over here. Over here, we have selected a leader for each player, as well as they have drawn cards for the starting hand, and each person is going to get one of each different type. These are hidden cards that only you can see, and they all have their own unique actions on them when you play them. You're also going to start with two infantry and one single golem, and these little um, these little fortress areas, which you can actually 
actually place on the board to give yourself stronger strength throughout the game when you're battling. You're going to be using these quest tokens as well. When you place them, these your characters down, you're also going to be placing these down and putting them in appropriate areas on the board that have circles. And you're going to try and get to these locations and use their experience to gain different, uh, different encounter cards over here. You're going to start with these flipped face up, and you're going to be using these for special abilities, mainly for attunement on locations. When you flip these over, you're going to begin to attune yourself, um, and then you'll get to use these abilities here. They're going to give you victory points. Now, there's a ton of symbology, I know that, on these cards, and we'll try and go over a couple of them, but for the most part, you're going to have to look it up for yourself, because there is a lot to go over. But as you can see, we've got the golems here, and then you have your supplies for each player. Now, these are going to be used when you recruit them, when you're playing cards throughout the game, and I'll explain that in a little more detail. But also, on the board itself here, we'll move these cards over, as you can see. This is where you're going to be placing down your cards, and these are the ones that are going to stay there for the majority of the game. You can remove them and switch them with other ones. For the most part, you're going to be putting down your cards. You'll be able to use these as special actions throughout the game. And they're going to do different things based on what the card says down below. Also, up at the top left-hand corner is going to be how many actions you're basically going to be taking as long as you're going to choose to use the act primary action. Let's go above and talk about how to go throughout your turn and how it works. So let's talk about your turn now. You're going to have set up so that you have your characters on the different islands as well as your different uh, points of interest where you're going to be going to get locations. You've got your hand of cards as well as your player board and stuff that you can actually place down on your player board. So I've got a couple cards here which I'll go ahead and show you guys and we'll talk about how they kind of work and what you're going to be using them for. So obviously you're always going to want to keep this reference with you because it's going to be very handy. So the first thing you can do as a primary action is act and like I said we'll go into more detail now. Uh, play one card and you can use this little X cost which is here at the top left hand corner to uh, gain certain things, like recruiting, deploying, and moving, as well as gaining energy. So up here, it's basically two special actions you can use. If you want, you can recruit one and move a unit. Moving is pretty simple. You can move from an adjacent spot to another adjacent spot, or a like terrain, so like mountains to mountains, as long as it's an adjacent island tile. You can also use it to gain energy, so you can spend that energy on additional cards, either from here or from on your board. And it also tells you a secondary little kicker ability. So on some of the cards, like these blue ones here, they have a little special energy symbol. It's like a little explosion symbol. And you can simply choose to play this card and use that to spend it on, to gain energy and then use that energy for this specific card to do whatever it says. Like for this one, maybe it says to move a golem somewhere and you gain a certain thing. Or for this card over here, it says spend uh, two energy to maybe move a, move a character. Or it, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. I'll let's find one that I know really well off the top of my head. Here's one. You can spend two energy to gain three victory points per character that is on an island space that you occupy. It also has uh, different uh, symbols at the top of the uh, of the card here. It shows, okay, this is a little um, little setting symbol, a little gears. This one's a little uh, lightning. This one here is a little night guy that moves, uh, it's kind of like a semicircle. And on your board, it will tell you if you can place them down or not. It's pretty simple which locations you can place them down or not. And whether or not they're going to be reoccurring abilities or abilities you can only use once. Most of the time, though, the red and the yellow ones are going to be abilities you only use once. They go into the, your discard area. And then you're going to draw them back at, 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 back at the end of the next, at the beginning of the next era. So every era, you're going to get new, you get your cards back, as well as you'll be able to buy certain cards. So that is basically how ACT works. You're going to be using them to move units, to um, recruit units, and to gain energy. And now also, you can go ahead and meditate. Meditate means you're basically doing nothing, but you're gaining energy as well as special abilities for each character on different locations. So for this little space here, you'll see that there's little um, little areas here. This one says one victory point. This says like an energy uh, and this one over here says put a fortification down. If you have a unit on each of these locations, when you meditate, you're going to gain these abilities as well. Maybe just gain an energy or gain a uh, victory point. Um, but that's kind of a nice thing where you're going to be able to get energy as well as bonuses. If you have a lot of characters on a lot of portions of the board, meditating is very useful and very powerful. You could also choose instead to develop. Developing is basically buying cards. You can simply flip one card additionally over, so there's three and then you get four, and then you can choose to buy one to three cards for one, three, and five energy, or if you didn't want to do that, you could simply remove all the cards, add three new ones, and then buy once again, or instead of, sorry, for one, three, or five energy. Those are the three main actions you can do, and I'll show you down below in a second. Uh, your, your other abilities, which I was talking about previously, is, uh, for instance, activate. You can activate a card on your tableau area in which you can spend whatever it's going to tell you to spend, and it'll do whatever it wants you to, whatever you want it to do. 
And then you've also got the ability to start a battle with somebody else, and it's going to be based on a power struggle battle, whoever has the most power. And you're also going to have this little, like, playing cards uh, face down and flipping them over to see what happens. As well as moving your islands. You can actually move the islands around the board and attune yourself to them as well. And finally, facing an encounter, you're going to be spending experience points, and it's going to be one for the first one, and it's times... Um, it's one times whatever the amount of encounters you've already faced before for experience. So if you were on your fourth experience card, it's going to cost you four times one to fight your next one. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, it tells you right here. If you're, and it has to be your leader that does it too. If your leader is on the same island as your uh, the location that you need to go for the encounter, pay one experience for each encounter you have or you have faced. So that's kind of how it works. Pretty simple though, right? And so that's basically the basic idea. Going back and forth, fighting each other, gaining victory points and experience points and power and playing cards down, putting them in the discard pile. And at the end of the era, new stuff happens. And after every round, new cards are going to get flipped over on the board. So after I went and my opponents have all went, we're going to flip over a new location card and it'll show you uh, which which locations are going to be for uh, what what uh, points you're going to be able to get on each location at the end of the era. So that's how it's going to basically work. And there also might be a chance the monster is going to spawn, and if the monster pops there, there's also a chance the storm card might spawn, and that'll actually move the monster around, and the monster can fight anybody that gets in its location at the end of that era, which I'll show you a little bit more about. But let's go ahead and look down below, and I'll show you all the actions up close so you can see them, get a good idea of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and just show you a few turns of the game. The first thing you'll need to notice is on the other board on that's not being shown right now, this is the top card here, and for every single round, after everybody's gone, you're going to take the card from the top and place it in the location that is next open. It'll be like this. And so then for the next round, then you take this card and place it like this. And you're going to be able to see what's coming up, right? So, oh, no, the monster's coming up. So we'll take the first one and place it onto the two slot. Now that that is done, the first player will get to go. And as you can see, there's a first player. He's going to have three energy to start with. And the second player will have four energy. These are the experience points they'll get, their hand of cards. He is now going to get to choose one of the primary actions, act, meditate, or develop. He's going to simply choose to act. He's going to play one of the cards here. So he's going to play this card here. And that is basically the one that is going to give his commander plus two attack power if he puts it in the slot here. What he gets first, though, is he gets this. And these are act points. He can choose to uh, increase his uh, energy pool by two if he wants, or one in any combination, as well as recruiting units from his pool of units and putting them here onto his board, or simply placing the units and acti activating them onto the board. And you're always going to be placing, when you activate them from here to here, putting them onto the location where your commander is at. So he would be right here. Now, if he wanted to, he could simply choose to take one and put it on here and take that one and put them on here, or any combination of those three. What I think he'll do is he will take one of these guys and put it here, and I think another good idea would place one right there. Also, he has this little kicker at the bottom, which says, okay, if you want, he can spend two points, and he can place this right here. He'll do that, one and two. And now, for the rest of the game, or as long as this card is on the field, his commander is going to get plus two attack power, as long as, it, uh, as long as he's on the board in his region, so that's pretty useful, right? After he has done that, then he's going to move on to this next area over here, the secondary actions. He could choose to start a battle, or to move his island if he wanted to, or he can simply choose to activate a card effect, but he has no use for those because they don't have any effect currently. And he also could choose to face an encounter if he was on the location that had his command uh, encounter spot. So this would be his uh, encounter spot. If his guy was right here, he would be able to do that. Um, but he chose not to move on his turn. He could have used these to move as well. So he is basically going to be done. And the next player is going to get to go. If you use a card and don't place in the board, you put in your discard pile over here. At the end of the area, you're going to get all the cards that you had played back into your hand, as well as all the cards that you get from over here. These are additional actions you can take. So the next player is going to get to go. I'm going to look through his hand of actions to choose uh, if he doesn't want to meditate or develop. And uh, maybe, hmm, does he want to develop? Maybe he will develop. So we're going to go with a develop action. Why not, right? And it tells you on the, on the card what uh, the develop is going to be. So it says, okay, develop. Flip. I can either choose to flip one of these guys over and put it here. And then buy from this pool one, two, or three cards. Or I can wipe the board and I can choose to fill it up again with three cards and then buy one, two, or three. So we'll just do, go ahead and do that. So now we've got three new cards in the board. And let's say he wants this three right here. That's all he wants. He can then go ahead and spend one energy for one card and he would take this card and he would put it into his hand for later use. And then you would go ahead and refill the board up with another card. You're always going to have these three here. 
And so then he would be done. He'd get to go ahead and choose he wanted to to activate or use or, or uh, do any of his other actions there. And he obviously can't do that right now. He didn't play a card, so he's not going to get to do what this guy did. So the next portion of the round is going to begin in which you're going to take the next card and put it down to this three spot. And oh no, like I said before, we have the uh, the monster coming now. So I got to be careful about that. And it'll tell you where the monster goes. The next player is now going to go ahead and look at his hand. If he wants, he can uh, play this card here. This is actually a pretty cool one. It's going to cost him two energy to act. Uh, this one over here is the one where he has islands with his character. And this one over here is a discard a card and he can act. I think we will go with just going with this one. So as you can see, he can play the card and he's going to get two act points. He could choose if he wants to use one of them to move a guy. You can move from one space to another, any adjacent spot. However, you can't move under this. This space is basically blocked from the game because it's a two-player game. If it was a three-player or four-player game, this would be removed. Or he could choose to move from one location to another. Now, you're going to be moving from like to like. So in this case, he can go from here to here because they're both uh, both ice areas. Or he could choose to go from here to here or here to or, you know anywhere he wants that has the locations available. So if he goes to from here to here, uh, then he can go from here to over here if he'd like. So you have that idea. That's how kind of the board is going to be working for movement and each character is only allowed to move once except for your commander he can move more than once so um if he wants she wants to she or she or he wants to he can take place this card and they can go okay maybe he'll move one space there and then he can choose to recruit another dude onto the board there now he doesn't have two energy for this so he's not going to be able to use that ability and this one doesn't go on his board it would just simply go to the discard pile where he'd get it back at the end of the next uh at the beginning of the next era and so his turn would be done he doesn't have anything he can use or, or activate, so he's going to move on to the next player here. The next player is going to look at his hand of cards. Now he's got a, a, newer, a newer card here. Uh, let's see what this one does. Uh, so it shows symbology, too. What's really cool is in the uh, booklet I have, and I imagine the rule book for you guys, it will have all the different cards and what they do and how you can use them. Okay, so we have gone ahead and found the card here, and it says as long as you play this card in your player board, when you, um, whenever you have an accessory card, you can choose to play it without having to pay for its cost, and the cost is gonna be right here in the bottom of the card. So yellow is gonna be able to use this. He's gonna look at the symbol. It says, okay, it's a card symbol, so it's gonna go right here, and that says whenever any of these cards get played, you're not gonna spend for the kicker. However, to play this here, he's gonna have to spend his his energy, so he'd go one, two, and three. He's still gonna have three of these left, so he can choose to start recruiting. He can go to one and maybe he want to increase his energy by another one and then he can recruit another dude just like that. And now he's got a static ability that's going to be very useful for the rest of the game. Um, always remember though for the kickers it's going to cost unless you have cards like this that allow it not to cost anything. After that is done once again it's going to rinse and repeat and another card is going to get flopped down and here's the boss. The boss will show you okay it's got this little mountain symbol so you're going to take the chit that represents that symbol and look for it on the board somewhere and it's going to be let's see if I can find it here really quick I think it'd be like right there and it shows you a little symbol there and it's got purple there and it shows you all the different things that it will come with on the card you're going to go ahead and place it down on the board just like you would any other terrain piece and the game is going to continue like that going on until the round or the era is over and the era is over after all of the land pieces on the deck have been played down at which point the cleanup phase and the point scoring phase is going to begin Okay, so after the round in which the last of the island pieces has been or island cards have been placed down onto the board, that is going to signify the end of the last round. So you have one more round left before the end happens. After that occurs, then you're going to go throughout each and every card, and you'll be scoring for each of the different locations you have characters on. Not only that, but if you have more characters than somebody else, they're not going to score anything for that location. Additionally, a monster that is on a board is going to potentially move if there's a storm card, and it'll move clockwise, and it'll fight any people in the location of that island. Uh, if the monster overtakes players, then that, those players will lose um, at least one full area of units. So if there's two out of the three areas which they had units, they'd choose one of those areas to lose all of their units. Everybody who did that would have to do that. Not only that, but if, let's say, that they chose to fight the monster because they could, uh, this guy has 13 defense, and they would need to have that uh, uh, higher power in order to beat him, the person who contributes the most is going to get more victory points, and then second, and then finally third place, up to from two all the way to four points. And then you would lose the monster. If not, the monster wasn't defeated, you would actually lose, and the monster would stay in, and for the next... And the next round will begin in which the monster will be put back into the deck. Uh, and not only that, let's go ahead. I want to talk about a couple other things I didn't really mention. And you're going to be using experience. You can actually take these cards here whenever you go to certain locations. You go ahead and flip these cards over. 
and it'll tell you what happens. So it's like an action, an action reaction. You choose, okay, do I want to use the foot symbol or the treasure symbol? Maybe you can think about walking through the wilderness or simply finding treasure in this location. You'll flip it over, and based on the side, you're going to see what it does. And it'll tell you maybe you're going to gain a free golem, or you're going to gain three victory points, depending on how many uh, different locations you control of that specific type. And so that's kind of how these guys work. As well as um, the meditate action. I didn't explain that fully well. Basically, you get, when you choose meditate, you get three energy points as well as you're going to gain one bonus for every every unit on each location that you have of and so they're going to gain certain victory points and whatnot it's basically it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward as far as that goes but after that you're going to take all the fortifications off of the map you're going to remove any um any excess stuff of, uh all, basically all the fortifications and whatnot you're going to get all of your cards from your discard pile and put them back into your hands so you can use them once again and everything else is going to be left on the board as normal after that's basically taken place you're going to get the second arrow cards as well as the second monster shuffle the monster into the deck shuffle this uh, take the first error cards remove them take the second error cards and put them on the board so where that's where you're gonna buy stuff and then continue until the game has come to its full conclusion so a couple caveats too before we get into the review of the game now each and every single type of commander you're gonna have has its own unique ability for instance this guy right here he says for each error as long as he remains unwounded he's gonna give you four power which is pretty useful for energy and they all have their own unique specific uh, abilities and also attunement you can choose to tune yourself to one of the island areas and it'll tell you what they do when you move your island and then attune to that and once you flip over your little piece you're not gonna be able to do it again unless something allows you to flip it over this one says you're gonna gain two victory points per experience you have so that's very useful as well another thing to note is battling so battling is pretty simple there's units that are going to have power you've got the infantry worth one golems worth two and then your commander worth three the commander gets wounded he's only worth one he's becomes kind of not as powerful throughout the game um, but Nevertheless, if you have your units and somebody else's units on the same area and you choose to battle, you're also going to do something pretty unique. You're going to take a card from your hand and put it face down along with everybody else who's in the battle, and then you're all going to simultaneously flip it up. If you flip over a red card, you're going to add the uh, X value, which is going to be the top right-hand corner value, to your attack, which means you can possibly win the battle with that. You use the yellow, that's going to be how many movement spaces you're going to be able to have to make your units get away from the area. If you use blue, that means you're going to gain that many victory points along with the amount of victory points of how many units you have on the field in that area as well as if you use green you're going to gain energy equal to the cost of the card plus in every in unit every unit you own that is on that location as well so there's four different things you can choose to do and also when you uh, battle and you maybe it's like the opponent has six and you only have five power you're going to lose the difference in power based on um, units so if you have three if you have let's say you have four infantry units and they have uh, four infantry units right but they played a card that was one well that would mean they'd have five and you would have four so you're going to lose one of those units now you're not going to lose your commander it's just going to be wounded however you can lose golems which are worth two then that would just, you just have to simply choose between maybe an infantry or golem but if you have to lose two you'd try to choose the golem rather than choose uh, both the infantry and the golem right so you have that kind of uh, differential in what you want to uh how you want to get rid of certain infantry units and whatnot. But that's kind of how battling works. And it works the same thing with monsters as well. So that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to go through all three eras, and at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. You're going to be getting points throughout the game as you play different cards and do different things, adding them to your board. You're going to gain different points at the end of every era, in which is going to be um, depending on what locations you're at. And certain locations are going to have more points of value than others. And you're kind of seeing that as each and every round goes by. Oh, this is, oh, the islands are coming up, and they're going to be worth seven points. I need to get my guys to islands right now or as the desert's only worth two points and that's going to be very useful maybe next era it will be but this one it might not be so you have kind of like uh always pushing around the board you're forced to be moving around you can't kind of turtle which is really cool about this game the artwork is spectacular Spectacular. That was the first reason why I wanted to get, I was very interested in this game was because the artwork for this game is amazing. Um, the way it plays is pretty simple too. You have primary actions and you have secondary actions. And you have three different primaries and three slash four different secondaries. The only confusing part really is going to be the cards in the game because there's a ton of symbology. You're going to be taking those cards and placing them down and then you're going to choose a lot of different options and you get a vast array of how you want to play the card do you want to play the kicker at the end or the beginning do you want to use your energy for this or that and 
Also, not only that, but how many different cards you can get. And as the eras continue, you're going to have more cards in your hand, more likely, because you're going to be buying more cards from the era decks, and they're going to get progressively better as the game goes on. You don't need a battle in this game to win. It's all about strategy, it's all about tactical decision making, and it's all about diplomacy as well. You can be smart and try and go after the biggest guy if you need to, or secretly you have a bunch of hit cards in your hand that you can start playing down that are going to benefit you in your tableau. The game is tableau management, it is area control, and it also is a little bit of a battling game, but it all kind of fits into this one really nice game. It's hard for me to determine what kind of style game this is, but I guess maybe area control, tableau management, I suppose. Nevertheless, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, the one negative thing in the game, though, is so much symbology. Luckily, though, the game comes with a ton, and I mean a ton of different references that is going to explain to you how and each what, what each every type of symbol symbol does and how they work and as you play the game more and more you're going to get better at it you're going to be able to understand which cards go where and how they all work and not only that though you can say okay this is the symbol for victory points now i understand that this is the symbol for different locations i understand that as, as well and when new cards pop up you don't even need to look eventually it's just gonna be like oh that's what that does uh, although there's been a couple that have tricked me the art though look at this art guys this art is spectacular it's got some really cool stuff going on i was so shocked to see this stuff and that was what really kicked me off this reminded me of no face that was the main thing i, I was i was i was digging it digging 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 this artwork the game though works very well and it's very fluid and it's it means thick it's difficult it's complex right and the turns can go maybe i have a analysis paralysis likelihood however uh, we didn't have that problem. We were once we got the idea of the game, the flow of the game, with the rules, it was kind of started getting like streamlined and it started to flow really well. The only thing I was scared about was that monster because that monster is super hard to deal with, especially in a two-player game. Three-player game, it's kind of funny because it comes more about working together to kill that thing or working against each other all at the same time, which is a very nice little addition. And I like how each and every era has their own unique cards that increase the uh, the game and how it expands with the game as well. And, I mean, everything works really well. The game's excellent. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Like I said, though, it's going to be one of those things where if you like thicker, tactical-style games, you're going to really enjoy this one. If not, you don't know, like all the symbols, maybe something you want to pass on. It's going to be up to you, though. But for me, this game is a definite must. I really, really enjoyed Miss Thea, and I'm very happy to support it. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out our other videos. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps, and we do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more as well as checking out Mystia currently on Kickstarter. You gotta check it out. It's doing super, super well, and there's a reason for it. It's spectacular, and I'm waiting to see those miniatures, too. The gameplay is super fun, with, even without them, though, so if you're a big miniatures person, just kind of a nice little added, added touch. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and uh, also my friend Ferdinand, the Cardboard Stacker. Some great channels there, and they do a lot of good work. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.